So I just wanted to give a little video update on my CNC mill. I've been building this thing for oh, three, four years and mostly just tinkering with it. Pieces that I acquired or traded or built. Um, so there's been a lot of redesigning with what I had. The original design was based on pieces I had on hand and then I kind of slowly got more pieces that were a little bit better but I'll give a kind of a quick overview of it. So the frame is 8020. Um, this is the 15 series so this is one and a half inches here and this is a 3030 so this is three and a half inches by three and a half inches tall. Mostly connected with uh, stock 8020 brackets. Uh, there's a couple more brackets here. These are all just kind of standard pieces. Um, the motors are from Probotics. Um, each of the axes is built the same way so there's a motor and then a helliptical connector and then an acne nut thrust bearing inside here is a sleeve uh, pressed in sleeve bearing and then uh, another thrust bearing and then another nut so you can sandwich these two nuts on the thrust bearing and then any of the axial forces get taken by this bracket which is bolted to the frame rather than the motor so that you don't uh, destroy your motors um, the y-axis is the same, um, you know, radial connector or elliptical connector, uh, acne nut thrust bearing, radial bearing, thrust bearing, acne nut. This is a 3D printed bracket. I'd originally intended to replace that, but since all the loads, axial and most of the radial loads are actually taken by this bracket, um, the 3D printed one has worked fairly well. So until it doesn't work, I'm probably not going to replace it. The um, rails are supported rail. Um, got those from eBay and Amazon, I think. And then there's a pillow blocks. So it's a split pillow block with ball bearings in there. And then it's a little tough to see, but there's a acne nut underneath there. Um, and it's an anti-backlash nut, so it's a piece of plastic you can loosen and tighten. Um, this screw to um, adjust that to get it a little to get rid of some of the, the slop. Um, on the other side of the uh, acne nut or acne screw, there's just a radial bearing. There's no thrust bearing on this end. That's kind of standard design. Same thing on the Y. So this side you have thrust, and on this side you only have radial. That um, helps with the expansion contraction. Um, heat for the screw so it doesn't bind. Z axis is the same way, so motor, same connector, same assembly all the way through. Acme nut, and then down at the bottom is just a radial supported rails. Um, and then the overall frame is just a big L shape. So this is the center column that holds the Z axis, and then this is the um, X, or yeah. So this is the only one that is a compound axis that has to have the combination of the airs, um, which is nice. As far as electronics go, or I guess I'll talk about spindle first. So spindle, this is a tag mini mill spindle, and then it's got a V-belt, two pulleys, and then um, there's a motor in here. I have a couple pictures on the uh, up on the blog so you can see it taken apart. Um, this belt's a little too short when it when I get a longer one this uh, actually will be able to slide in and out um, and you'll you can tighten it down with these two screws and there'll be some springs in there. Um, again be, there's a couple pictures on the blog that show that a little bit better. So this is all custom machined um, the spindle mount um, which was fun. And then this is custom here, and these plates are custom. Um, the top motor mounts custom, and all these pieces are custom. I machined all those, so got a lot of uh, practice machining. Uh, as far as the electronics go, um, it's not too complicated. There's a, a breakout board from Probotics that goes to a DB25 connector, so an old printer connector, and then there's Sorry about that. Four um, stepper motor drivers. Originally, I was going to use two motors on the Z-axis, 
but then I changed the design so um, this will support a fourth axis uh, for like a rotary bed or something down the road. And then uh, I have fuses in here, so power comes in and each uh, the four motor controllers has its own fuse and the um, breakout board has its own fuse as well. And that lets, uh, lets me have higher um, current, current fuses on each motor controller because each motor controller can draw, they, it says it's rated for up to 3 amps. So I didn't want to put a single fuse in because with four motor controllers that would be a 12 amp fuse and I don't want 12 amps to go into any individual board so um, each of these has their own um, fuse and actually I, I have uh, two amp fuses in there so um, probably could get a little bit more power down the road if I wanted to. Um, and then this is just a 24 volt power supply um, for it, it's from Probotics too. This came mostly as a kit. Um, and then I have a motor controller for a DC motor, which this controls the spindle. And then uh, it's a little hard to see, but um, there's a little encoder on this piece and there's this reflective piece on the tape. So every time this spins, um, it gives a count. Um, that's going to eventually be wired up to a mock tac, um, which is pretty awesome off the shelf tachometer. Um, and that lets you measure the RPM or the surface feet per minute of the spindle. So with the way I have it set up, um, it will actually measure the spindle speed and not the motor speed, which is what I want. Um, and then that way if you change the belts and stuff you don't have to worry about changing your speed. So that's uh, nice. So we will uh, power it up and give it a little demo. You can hear the motors turn on and then if I uh, turn this knob you can see the spindle is spinning. Let's see, I'll turn it off again and then on. So uh, still a little kinks to work out there, but we'll get that smoothed out. I think once I get the longer belt and have the springs in there, that'll hopefully dampen it. Um, and what's good to know is that it doesn't matter if these kind of wobble a little bit because the bearings are actually in this part, and as long as those stay square, then um, it doesn't matter if the belt kind of wobble as well as pulling if the motor is wiggling because all the precision goes in these things. So I'm going to turn that off so that you can hear it. So this is uh, off the tag spindle. It's just an ER, uh, ER16 call it I think. Or yeah, ER16. Um, which I think goes just shy of a half inch spindle. Um, and then, as far as electronics go, so that's running to a computer, which is running uh, um, Mach 3 CNC, which is free for a limited number of G code lines, which is great to test out. And uh, I have some very simple G code in there, so I will run this. And let's see if the spindle. And, uh, it's a little noisy. I think the, uh, there's still some loose, loose connections, loose screws. I need to tighten up and, and get everything uh, squared up. But it does run um, quite well. I got a amount of vice to hear still, and then, uh, you know, hopefully, and, uh, cut some, make some chips in so we can spin, spin the spindle and X and Y. Um, so if I 
I can manually run the x-axis, which it actually runs each axis pretty quiet. Um, it's really the, that spiral is cutting the cause to sound. That and then the Z. So it runs pretty well. Um, I'm a little worried that the Z axis might be pretty heavy. Um, so when you're coming down, that's not too big of, big of a problem, but when you try to lift it back up, this is all pretty cantilevered, so it might tilt just enough to cause a lot of pressure on the um, the screw. So at some point, I'm going to build some sort of um, counterweight system. So there's like a chain that goes up to some idler sprocket, and then on the back, there'll be a counterweight that offsets the weight of this whole spindle. Um, it's not terribly heavy. But um, there's no reason that the motor should have to lift that, uh, that weight. So that is down the road. Thanks for uh, tuning in. And questions, comments, critiques, uh, it definitely has a ways to go to get it all prettied up. But it's uh, getting there. So thanks.